Neil, welcome back. So it is no longer news that the Senate has started the screening of ministerial nominees, but the question is, what really is the importance of this screening in a democratic government? Joining us for this discussion is uh, Kolade Olutekumbi. He's a legal practitioner, and we are so glad to have you in the studio today. Thank you. For you know, um, yeah, so you, you, I don't know if you watched the screening yesterday, the whole process. Yeah, yeah, I did. You did, right? So what do you think? What, what, what jumped out at you in all of it? I think before we go into screening, it's important that we appreciate the provisions in our constitution as mm -hmm. regards to the screening and the appointment of ministers. Okay. Under our constitution that we practice presently, that is the 1999 constitution, mm. section 147 gives the president the power to appoint a ministers. Okay. And in appointing the minister, the constitution says he must take cognizance of section 43, which means that each minister must come from a state of the federation. And that minister must be an indigenous of that state. So this is the first condition for the appointment of a minister. Now in appointing the minister, the provision of the constitution says no one will be a minister except such individual has been uh, approved or screened by the uh, uh, Senate. Mm -hmm. But if the Senate does not do a return to the president within 21 days, mm -hmm. it is assumed that that nomination has been cleared so the president can go ahead to make the appointment. So in screening, the provisions of the constitution is that the nomination that is made to the Senate shall be approved by the Senate. In the Senate's own wisdom, they decided to go into screening. But what you have found is that people have been saying that how do you screen a candidate if no portfolio is attached to the office? <laughs> what question do you begin to ask such a candidate? So for me, I think this, this screening is just a ritual exercise. Ritual? Yes, it's a ritual exercise. It has no... Uh, any particular significance because at the end of the day it is the president who has the discretion and the prerogatives to determine who does what so even if you go through the screening exercise and you appear to have been uh, you have you, are, you appear to have given such opinion that you ought to have been a minister of a particular portfolio the president can decide to give you another portfolio mm. So it is not, it, uh, for me, I don't think it's uh, neither here nor there. I think simply what we should begin to look at is that the president who has the discretion to exercise in the appointment of this individual as a minister is the only one that can give us the quality of minister that we, we require. Mind you that this is a provisional, it is a provision in the constitution that gives him the discretion so no one can force the president to make any appointments. That is his own prerogative. Mm. So who he appoints is his own prerogative. Because the executive power of the federation is vested in the president. And this minister, the vice president, and all other people that will work with him are just to assist him. Because the, the constitution gives the president the executive power of the federation. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, I, I want to ask, isn't that some form of misplaced powers here? Because uh, there is no provision in the constitution that says the president must uh, give or nominate an individual with a portfolio. And, um, and then you could see what is going down right now. And wouldn't you think that uh, uh, there should be some, some form of a revisit of that power of the president? Uh, well, yes, I agree with you that uh, it, it is important that the the... the the constitution is look at in such direction to ensure that whoever is coming for screening, if there is not, there is going to be screening, mm. that that individual portfolio is attached. But what do you see in the Senate? If you have been a member of the Senate, you have been a member of House of Rep, now they have even extended it to a member of House of State Assembly. House. Yes. You just take a bow and go. To me, that is not... Uh, that is not a discharge of a constitutional responsibility. If you ask me, it is the prerogative of the Senate to screen, no doubt. But I believe this idea of asking people to take a bow and go is, is not good for us. They are not screening for themselves. They are also screening for Nigerians 
who want to watch these people tell us what they intend to do so that they can hold them accountable to whatever they must have told Nigeria during their screening. Mm. But where you, the situation where you have an individual coming to the Senate and he has been a former senator and they say the tradition of these chambers is for you to take a bow and go. And the man just introduced himself, my name is so, so, and so, and he takes a bow and go. And then you have another candidate that you have to go drill and screen and, you know, ask questions. I don't think it's right. They, they should have equal opportunities. There shouldn't be any discrimination in screening. The screening exercise is not uh, something the senior should look at as if they are trying to give somebody a, a, a discretion as to whether he needs to be screened or not. It is a provision that that individual should be approved. And, and in approving such individual, they need to screen them. So the idea of saying take a bow and go, I don't think is right, mm. if you ask me. Okay. And I don't think it's a discharge of a responsibility that the Nigerian people had given to the Senate. We want to see this minister. Want to, they should ask them questions. And uh, what you also have is that if you don't attach portfolio, then individuals that appear before the Senate, questions, variety of questions might be asked to, for that individual. But you cannot hold that individual accountable to anything. Hmm. Let me take you back to your opening. You, you talked about federal character uh, being backed by the Constitution. Right now, there is an uproar over the non-inclusion of FCT indigents in the ministerial list. What's your take? What does the Constitution say about the, the FCT? The, the Constitution says that there shall be minister from each state of the Federation, mm -hmm. at least one minister. Mm -hmm. Is, F is FCT a state? I don't think so. We have 36 states in the, the Federation FCT. of Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, FCT, FCT uh, uh, Federal uh, Capital Territory, is not a state. It's not. It's just the, the, the headquarter of the federal government. I, I, and I know that the House of the, house of, uh, the which, National which Assembly... Which state is housing the FCT? The National Assembly. This National Assembly makes law for, the, for, FCT. for FCT. FCT. They don't have the House of Assembly as you have in other states. Okay. They don't have a governor. They don't have a speaker. It is the National Assembly that legislates for them. So FCT is not really a state, if you ask me. Because the Constitution defines the state that we have in the Federation. And there are 36 states. And the president is obligated to make an appointment in each of the states. Okay. So I believe that if there's no... Who is, who is an EDG or FCT anyway? Who is an EDG of FCT? Well, you have people who originally no, lived FCT, in Abuja. No, FCT is, uh, you know, people like uh, all this, uh, uh, those sub-area of FCT. You can't really call them an EDG of FCT. The FCT is the federal capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. So and all of us are indigenous. I can go to FCT and contest. Okay. So but yes. the constitution says that individual that is appointed from the state must be an indigenous of that state. So you're saying Senator Dino Melaye and Senator Aduda. They are not there. Uh, they are they not, don't have cases. They are not indigenous of FCT. No, no, no. They are speaking on behalf they of the They don't have any case. They okay. don't have any case. Because they have to look at the provision of the constitution very well. If you look at the provision, they should read section 147 of the constitution of the provision of our constitution. They will see clearly that the president, all the, the president needs to do is to ensure that each minister come from the 36 states. Okay. He said must come from each of the states of the federation. Mm. And FCC is not a state of the federation. It's not. Okay. With due respect to them. Okay, so let's 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 go back. Let's go back to the screening um, at the Senate. Uh, we had a guest yesterday who was very frantic about the fact that, look, the president has nominated people that need to be compensated for their work for the party for his, for his re-election. And uh, with what you could see play out at the Senate, at the screening, uh, that could give, give credence to that statement. That uh, then why, why screening at all if it's about um, uh, payback, if it's about um, 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 compensation for for party um, uh, loyalists. Why, 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 why take Nigerians through this um, so-called process? We spent hours sitting down watching these activities and we can all see that it's really taking us nowhere. I think that, uh, that, uh, that opinion is subjective, if you ask me. When 
it, when you have a power you exercise by your discretion, it is subject to your own idiocracies. Mm. You are the one who determines what you want. But if the Constitution has made provisions or has clearly stated what and what should be done, that is then you begin to put the, uh, the president into tax. Mm. So as to who he appoints, whether it's for political compensation or not, that is within his own discretion. And nobody can question that. Mm. Because he's the only one that the Constitution says can make the appointment and it's according to his own discretion. It's not that there's a, there's a standard that the only standard that is laid down is that such individual must be an individual that has that can also contest an election into the House of Representatives. So you can't just appoint anybody. It must be somebody that can also contest election into the House of Representatives. What do I mean? That it must be somebody that is qualified to be a member of House of Representatives. Mm. If you are not qualified to be a member of House of Representatives, you cannot be a minister. That's what the Constitution says. So, and that is the only thing the president needs to satisfy himself. Once he satisfies himself that this individual can also contest an election into the House of Representatives, then he can go ahead to appoint. So the, 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 the reason why he does that appointment it is all prerogative, and we should not subject that to any uh, any uh, congestion or, 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 or guests. Mm. You know, yes, we know that in political. Uh, your opinion. I'm a bit more concerned about your opinion right now. You've seen the list of, of nominees. Do you, do you think it is strictly about competence and ability to perform? No, 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 no. There you can fault when it comes to competence. Really? Yes, I, that's my opinion. And what, the, and what, and what, about, see, what about credibility? The constitution, you see, let us go. The reason why we are having issues or why people just, we cannot, you cannot begin to say what you think is right, what you think is wrong. Mm. The only reference where we have issues in Nigeria is our constitution. The constitution says those who will be minister must be persons that are qualified to be a member of House of Representatives. So once the, the, the president has satisfied himself that this individual can also contest election into the House of Representatives, he can go ahead to make the appointments. And the, mind you, after the appointment, the Senate must approve. So if they are not competent, the Senate has the, the discretion to drop them. Because the appointment is not sacrosanct. It has to go, to go, it must have the approval of the Senate. But if the Senate fails to do the approval, Within 21 days, the president can go ahead to make appointments. Yeah, but which brings us to this. Does, do you think the Senate really does due diligence, you know, when it comes to this screening um, process? I mean, you have people with uh, cases of corruption hanging over their heads, and you ask them to take a bow and go. You have people with, you know, one skeleton in their cupboard or, or the other. But, so do you think the Senate really, really exerts itself when it comes to screening well, of nominees? Well, uh, um, to answer that, the, the Senate... You know, also, if you look at our constitution, the constitution says the Senate shall approve okay. the nomination of the president. So it's about approval. It's about approval. And in their own, in their own discretion. Uh, uh, discretion, they have decided to, before they can do approval, they want to screen. And in screening, they, I'm, I'm sure they synergize with other institutions to get information here and there. And even Nigerians, the only problem I have with this exercise is that the period between appointment and screening is too short. Nigerians should be given the opportunity to write to the Senate to express their opinion about certain individuals who are coming for screening. And so that the, the Senate, even if they don't have the benefit of the information, they will have it from the Nigerian people, which we don't have now. Because shortly after the appointment, they went into screening immediately. As I, I understand, this, this screening started yesterday. Yeah. And from yesterday, about six or seven of them had gone through the exercise. About nine so of by them. today, if, we, if care is not taken, all of them will have, been, will have been screened. Question is that, is the exercise, you know, uh, transparent enough? Well, it is for the senior to decide. Because the idea of somebody taking a bow and go, like I have said earlier on, what question do you ask the individual, that individual? So if you have been a senator before and you have uh, uh, any issue that you need to make some clarification into, that idea of taking a bow and go 
we deny that individual from responding to such allegation. Because the question is that once they ask him to take a bar go, you can't even ask him any question. Mm. Mm. You can't. Okay, let's let's move this conversation a little bit further. Um, I understand that um, these nominees were were meant to go through some level of security checks. Um, yeah, from the DSS and the rest of them, you check if they have corrupt um, cases hanging on their corruption cases hanging on their neck or allegations or accusations. Uh, and um, that that really worries me because I, I've gone through uh, a, a few materials around these individuals, and I still see that some of them still have um, corruption cases on on their on their, on their neck. Uh, well, you see, I believe that the president must have, you know, sent the list of this individual to the security agencies even before putting them. Oh, are, are we so forward. sure they don't also no. get a bow and I mean, or they take a bow um, with the security <laughs> of the agencies as well? Well, you see, uh, there, there are certain things you don't, we cannot uh, begin to uh, call for question. For me, once there's a standard to the doing of a particular thing. It is that thing you hold that individual accountable to. But where exercise of power is at the discretion of an individual without any standard, then we can't just, we just wait and allow that individual to display his own or our own morality as to how he begins to do that thing. Instance, instances is that those who have gone for screening, some of them might have some investigation pending against them. But until an individual is found to be convicted of an offense, once there's allegation of an offense, once there's no conviction, I believe you, without uh, a trial of doubt that you can't begin to hold them accountable for an allegation. You because know, allegation may be proven. I mean, it may not be proven. Mm. If I allege that you have done something and I wrote a petition against you, mm. does that mean you are guilty? Okay, million dollar question. You know, you, we're talking about the screening process itself. Cast your mind back to what happened in the United States. Uh, not too long ago when uh, Brett uh, Kavanaugh was going to be uh, screened by the, uh, the lawmakers over there. It was some huge drama. It, there was some crying, some wailing. You had accusers who were invited yeah. uh, to the house to, 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 to come, you know, uh, commit their case. express their grouse. Yeah. And yeah. it was some real yeah. raw, yeah. I mean, raw deal, right? Do you see stuff like that happening? I, 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 think, I, I think the press will have to come, in, uh, they have to, uh, to, to, to build off their responsibility. The press The now? press. Okay. Because you are the eyes of the people. You are the voice of the people. You see, there is a lot, you know, I have seen in this country where somebody was appointed or was elected as the House of Representatives Speaker. And the press went out to bring out his background. The day he left uh, uh, King's College, immediately he saw it in the newspaper, he resigned. Okay. Didn't you know about it? He resigned. So the press has to be, has to come up with their, with their responsibility of investigative journalism in america morality seems to be attached to responsibility of public office if your morality is your moral conduct is in question you cannot hold public office it doesn't matter you know what we take for granted here they see you because you are going to be the synapses of everybody's eyes you are going to be a role model they see leadership as synonymous to role model. That's why when the justice of the Supreme Court was nominated by the president, you could see all the women that had problems with, with him mm. coming up to cry to the public. So I think that can happen here if the press can come up, expose these people. You know them. Is it just the press or the, quality, the press? I mean, the Nigerians themselves. Well, the Nigerians themselves. Yeah. Where do they express their opinion? Where do people express their opinion? Is it not through the press? It's through the press. You give information to the press, man. Look, I have an information about X and Y. Please look into it. And then you go into finding out what X and Y actually represent. It will happen here, but unfortunately, there's too much political drama that happens in Nigeria. Sentiments, uh, where you come from. Uh, religious bigotries and so on, so on and so forth. So people don't really want to admit even res simple responsibility 
Once you are in question, once your conduct is put into question, you begin to fly on Nigerian people. Oh, they are, they are prosecuting me because I'm an Igbo man. They are prosecuting me because I'm a Yoruba man. I, they are prosecuting me because I'm PDP or because of this and that. People don't want to hold up to responsibility. Like in this country, mm -hmm. you come up and apologize to the nation. You are sorry. People own up to their, to, to their conduct. But here we don't own up. So in the exercise of screening becomes more difficult. Because even when you throw this allegation on them, they still deny. Mm. Uh, uh, before, before I wrap this up, uh, quickly, uh, you know, I'm going to take you back again. Where we talked about um, credibility, uh, you talked about the fact that um, there are mere allegations. And, and one, not until an individual is um, uh, 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 called guilty by a court of competence jurisdiction, he remains um, uh, he's not corrupt. Uh, no, no, yeah. not, really, not really. Okay. Not well, really. Well, I, I want to take you back to a statement that was made by the party chairman uh, uh, talking about Adam Sosiomele. This was um, sometime in January where he says, um, join APC and all your sins will be forgiven. Do we see all of that playing out here? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of APC, APC, APC governor have been convicted. I'm aware of that. So I, I think he was quoted out of context. I, really? I, do not, I would not want to believe that he will go to that to say that say, we'll once say. you have allegation of corruption, you join PC <laughs> and you're saying they, they, they recall that the, the, the secretary of the federation had to leave office on allegation. Mm. You see, allegations... You're talking about Baba Pacheco, like Yes, what? on mere allegation. He has not been convicted. Recall. He has, he has not really gone he through the process. He was person. alleged he, to he, have he, done he, something. He didn't resign voluntarily. Well, because we know we know how long it took before well, before yeah, he left office. It, it, it was like get, push coming to shore. Yeah. So you know? In fact, the fact that he left office is a good omen for us. And then after how left many office, of them what, had what left? Has, what has happened? You see, the process. What has happened after he left office? Is, uh, the is, process, is, the process of conviction. You see, the law is that it is better to release three or twenty accused persons that to convict one innocent person. Mm. Sure. That is the principle and the jurisprudence of criminal prosecution. Mm. You cannot, when there is an allegation made against you, you must go in through the hall of proof. If you, if you convict an innocent man, it, the, the law allows at least, if you can release 10,000 criminals to go, it's, the law is, is, is okay that to convict one innocent person. So it is important that when you make an allegation, you also go and prove the allegation in the court of law. Because, you know, sometimes we, we, do, uh, uh, we do press conviction in Nigeria. Yeah, media, media uh, trial. Media trial, media conviction. Oh, he's been alleged to have done this, they have done that. He's guilty. But morality sometimes, when your office is called into question, the idea is for you to set aside and allow the people to look into your conduct, not to remain there and wait until you are convicted. That is what is, happens in decent society. Once you are alleged to have made certain infraction, and it's obvious that you know, those allegations are not just mere fabrications, that allegations that may require you to say either you are guilty or you are not guilty, you are supposed to step aside. You know, what you just said brings to mind what happened with uh, Kemi Adeosho. Yes. Former Minister of That's Kemi. a very decent woman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you record her, her, her stories, but how many Nigerians would throw that line of honor? Very few. Okay. Uh, I think it's a safe place to land. We've got to wrap up this segment. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yeah. Day. Uh, yes, thank you so thank you. much. You All that. right. So, so we wrap this segment up, yeah? Yeah. When we come back, we'll talk some more. Stay with us. We'll say something. We'll say no.